conservation problems, and I'm really um, excited to be relatively new also to uh, NIFWIP. Um, as Herbie said, I uh, came, well, I actually came most recently from National Aquarium, um, where we were working very much to build a conservation presence there um, to augment the business side of that operation, which is really heavily oriented get, uh, to, toward um, getting people in the door in an attraction-based industry. Um, but before that, I was in uh, at NOAA, where I ran the National Marine Fisheries Service and then a number of the other uh, uh, coastal uh, programs and, and, and ocean programs there. Uh, spent a good bit of my um, professional career with Maryland DNR, where I did it, um, ran forestry agency, ran wildlife agency, ran the fisheries agency. Actually started out um, in the Natural Resources Police patrolling on Chesapeake Bay and a Boston whaler. Um, too long ago for most of us to admit. Uh, you know, I have spent most of my career, although I'm a trained biologist, I've spent most of my career at this sort of intersection between uh, science and conservation needs and management and policy. Um, so I think a lot about um, the practical applications that are needed um, to affect conservation change, um, largely in a place-based environment, but also um, nationally and globally as well. Um, so uh, whether it be private intervention or public intervention or individual intervention of, um, of any stripe, um, I'm generally uh, uh, pretty organizationally agnostic. Um, I'm for having as big a toolbox as we can possibly have and then bringing the right tool to the game um, at any given day um, to align strategies and, and have an impact. Um, so let me just uh, say a few words about um, NIFWIF, uh, who we are. Um, we're a 501c3, we're a nonprofit organization, uh, but we have this unique charter. Uh, we have this federally um, chartered origin um, and a board that's appointed by the Secretary of the Interior. Um, and, and we're all about the ability to take money from both private sources and public sources um, and bring them to bear on, um, for the most part, on the ground conservation challenges. I do want to um, particularly acknowledge Amos and Maggie, both um, uh, very important in uh, formative years of the foundation uh, back through the 90s. Amos was a long-term executive director and Maggie was a long-term uh, board member and board chair. Um, so um, they'll correct me if I say anything wrong about the history of the organization. You know, so how do we do it? We really do um, think about this leveraging model um, to bring both, um, because of our federal charter, we bring both appropriated dollars as well as cooperative dollars. We have this um, relatively unique ability to enter into a cooperative agreement with federal agencies. Um, and then we're required to match those dollars with um, dollars that we raise uh, privately from non-federal partners. And I'll speak to a few of those momentarily. Um, and then we bring that money together and we apply it in hopefully um, leveraged focused and science-driven ways um, for priority wildlife and habitat conservation challenges, uh, mostly around the U.S. Um, we do have um, international work. Um, there are periods in our history when we've had more inter international work and, um, and more of an international focus. Um, but, but right now, uh, we're focused um, first and foremost on affecting uh, domestic conservation challenges in the U.S. And we think about these challenges from a species perspective. We think about them from habitat perspectives. We also deal with um, conservation issues um, uh, in, of all sorts of variety. Uh, let me say that, um, you know, based on the beginning, the foundation um, that Amos and Maggie laid, um, we have grown uh, substantially in recent years. And I think one of the things that I would really like to point out here is um, that that growth in uh, the private funding component of that chart is much more significant than the growth in the public funding component of that chart. Um, we also, in, in addition to bringing the money together um, at the outset, um, require our grantees um, to match, in, in, for the most part, um, our activities. Um, so we, again, um, for the most part, uh, more than double the money. I will say to you, just as an example, that um, when I was at NOAA, we um, 
had lots of interesting challenges associated with um, fisheries management around the coasts. And anywhere that you went, addressing those challenges were um, politically difficult. <laughs> Generally, you might understand that, right? <laughs> and so I was the fisheries director at NOAA, and um, we put a half a million dollars into a fund that became known as the Fisheries Innovation Fund um, at NIFWIF. NIFWIF took that half a million dollars and, and, and raised another $800,000. Um, so we immediately turned our half a million that we wanted to invest in innovative fisheries management approaches um, into a 1.3 million pot um, per year. I think um, we're now in the fourth or fifth year of the execution of that program. Um, and in addition to the value of leveraging, um, NIFWIF was able to very efficiently turn that money into conservation projects um, on the ground, at the dock, on the water, um, and, and around priority initiatives that we wanted to invest in. Um, so it was very efficient, it was effectively done, it was administered expertly. And at the end of the day, the other advantage to us as a federal agency, which was um, subject to all kinds of um, political challenges, is we frankly had um, a bit of an arm's length, uh, a, big, a bit of an arm's length protection from um, the politics that might be associated locally with um, any one project or another. So we were able to execute projects that frankly would have been uh, more politically difficult for us to execute directly um, through NIFWIF in a very efficient and leveraged way. And so that's an experience that, um, that I carried with me um, to uh, the staff level at NIFWIF. And I will say also that um, during the time that I was at NOAA, I had the pleasure of sitting on the board for the organization. So even though I'm relatively new on the staff side, I do have a fairly long and deep familiarity with the organization and, and respect for the way it, it um, does its work. Uh, so this is a, a, a slightly dated slide. Now this is through 2013. Um, but you can see um, the kinds of places that we do our work domestically, all 50 states, 4,000 organizations were really interested in uh, <coughs> capacity building um, at the local level. I'll say um, even before I was a, um, a funder of a NIFWIF initiative, I was a grantee of a, niche, of a NIFWIF initiative. Um, we started both the National Fish Habitat Action Plan and the National Conservation Leadership Institute um, when I worked for the Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies with uh, a small amount of funding from NIFWIP. So it's a powerful organization um, that um, has impact in all kinds of different ways. Uh, just very quickly, um, uh, our federal partners are many. Um, we have the particular um, charter relationship with um, the Fish and Wildlife Service and NOAA, uh, but we have uh, cooperative agreements and appropriated dollars that are directed um, into places um, that, um, that all of these in one, in one place or another agencies um, are invested and have important work. Um, we also just very quickly have um, many, many corporate partners. Um, we're always looking to add more. Um, and these co corporate partners come in all shapes and sizes with all kinds of motivations. Uh, but fundamentally what we're able to do um, is turn their goodwill into conservation dollars on the ground. And then we have uh, a whole range of foundation partners as well um, that work very closely with us that, um, that see us as an opportunity to bring money together, to leverage money, and then to put it out um, efficiently into worthy places on the ground. So um, we're a bit unique, even though that we have foundation in our name, we're not sitting on um, you know, some big, uh, big pile of money that we're, that we're sitting around doling out. Um, on any given day, we're competing with or giving money to um, the same organizations um, uh, around um, some of the big conservation projects that we're involved in. This is a busy slide, and I'm not, I, I'm not expecting you to um, uh, get every nuance of it, but I think it's really important to talk a little bit about um, the way that we think about our work. Um, the strategic, the ability to strategically use resources. So um, we have a long history of partner-based programs, um, but over time, one, one of the things that we have tried to do is get to a smaller number of strategically important investments, um, many of which are place-based, some of which are species-based, as I said earlier, some of which are issue-based. Um, but important to us is 
that we go into a place and we first um, execute a plan. And that conservation plan has a scientific component. We want to understand what the resource threats are. We want to understand the state, the current state of the resources um, that we're seeking to intervene on behalf of. And we want to understand the, the sort of the best collective basis for understanding scientifically um, the challenges that are out there and the kind of strategies that might be employed. Uh, then we go out and we implement the plan. And, um, and that plan has, again, both sort of scientifically strategic elements. Um, it also has business planning elements. You know, who are we going to raise fund money from? Um, how are we going to leverage those dollars? Who are we going to give money to? Um, and, then, and, and what kind of on-the-ground organizations might we grant to that can be uh, the mo most effective players in the space uh, where we have expressed an interest? Uh, we are um, increasingly focused on evaluating the nature of our impact um, so that we can explicitly measure our impact against um, that initial plan. Uh, and we are increasingly interested in then talking about the way that we have developed expertise um, and its potential application in other parts of the landscape. So I'll use as one example our Western Water Program. We got um, very involved with um, 